Boy, it seems like we were just on the air. And Welcome for good back. reason. Yes. <laughs> it's another edition of Litter Media Live here on Facebook Live with the icon Mike Smith. I am merely Dan Ramey. Thank you for joining us here today. You know, the danger of you calling me that, Dan, I've gotten to the point now where I've almost gotten used to it. That's, that's, I need a sample of uh, humility well, for, here. For the longest time, when you are what you are, I mean, you, you live it every day. You're the icon. But I get a uh, rude awakening when I get home. <laughs> you're not the icon. You might be the icon there, but when you're in this house. <laughs> you're, just, you're just that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, do list come to me. I did water the flowers the last two nights, so I, I'm pretty proud ah, of myself. Because she was uh, not able to. Did Did you get the actual flowers watered, or did you? <laughs> yes, you I did. Talking to Mister Mays in the backyard, <laughs> no, and just kind of looking over no, here and spraying the side no, of the house. I, I actually <laughs> was paying attention to what I was doing. So, you know. <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, today we have several news topics. We'll share with you some sports. Uh, it's that exciting time. For high school spring sports. You know, uh, on the way in today, I was telling you this story. I'd stopped at the gas station out on High Street, and there was, I mean, almost a dozen or more uh, motorcyclists. They, I mean, they were scattered out all over. Mike was intimidated. <laughs> yeah. And they had um, uh, motorcycle vests that said something club from Chicago. And I said, so you're from Chicago? Yeah. Well, where are you heading? Myrtle Beach. And then I'm driving down the street later, and I'm behind a car from Tennessee, Johnson City, Tennessee. So you just never know from one day to the next how many people are visiting our community. So I, I put saw a smile a, on your face. I saw a truck on Bridge Street. I met coming. I was coming back into town. He was leaving, going across the bridge. Had Alaska on uh, his front license plate. Wow. So yeah, from all over, and any more though you you can. <laughs> You can get confused by this, some of this because a friend of mine has some body work being done to their mm -hmm. vehicle. They drove a car that had, I think it was Arkansas license plate uh, at church Sunday morning. I'm like, hey, we got a visitor here today. <laughs> then I noticed, well, their car's not here, yeah. and it was their family in yes, the sir. car. So, so you're always entertaining. You are always, uh, what is it, the Bible talks about uh, entertaining angels unaware. That's right. So uh, they may not act like angels, but <laughs> they may be an angel that you are entertaining. All right, uh, on the program today, we've got this state in history. We'll dial up the Litter Media Wayback Machine. We'll find out what Mike has selected for us there. But uh, first, let's take a look at how the weather is shaping up. It is beautiful, but I think that's going to change here. Uh, well, it's sunny and 80 today. Uh, it's actually going to be sunny again tomorrow, but cooler. Uh, there's not any rain in the forecast. It's just going to be a, a cold uh, front moving in with no rain uh, mixed in. But 69 will be your high tomorrow. And then, as you can see, as we get into the weekend, uh, some cool overnight lows, but back into the 70s, probably by uh, Friday afternoon. I was thinking I saw some of the TV uh, mock-ups earlier this week talking about there being rain mm -hmm. possibly on Sunday and Monday. Yeah. I just took a look at the Weather Channel app, and it just shows cloudy conditions. Right. There so, was a 30% chance last night, and it, and it didn't. So One more reason for Mike to water the flowers. That's right. So, All right, coming up, we'll take a look at news stories that are happening across the Scioto Valley Coming your way next. But first, let's tell you about our friends at Accurate Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, your trusted comfort advisor. If you need something taken care of in your home in this fashion, heating, cooling, or plumbing, Accurate is so who you need to call. Click on this ad anywhere you see it at littermedia.com. It will take you right to their website where you can learn more about the services of Accurate Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. News next. <laughs> As a professional race car driver, I live for speed, power, and performance on and off the track. That's why I use the Dixie Chopper, the world's fastest lawnmower. Race into your local dealership today and test drive a new Dixie Chopper. Find a career you love with Pickaway Raw's adult education. Skilled trades careers are in high demand with no signs of slowing down. Pickaway Raw's offers career training programs with expert instructors and hands-on learning tactics to create a variety of opportunities. Visit our website for more information. 
At Rathcamp Financial, we believe in building client relationships for the long term, guiding you through the stages of wealth with a plan and bringing you closer to reaching your financial dreams. We believe in long-term relationships and working to earn your continued trust with our customized investment solutions. We started the day off with a special edition of Litter Media Live featuring these guys sporting pumpkin up in Pickaway County. Yeah, John Halley was our uh, special uh, special guest for the Pickaway County feature at 10 o'clock this morning and kind of took a, a stroll down memory lane. John, of course, a local guy, Circleville area, went to school up in Fostoria, then came back. Mm -hmm. and uh, Well, he actually went to school in Bowling Green. Fostoria is nearby. Nearby, like yeah. Frankfurt, Chillicothe. Yeah, it's not that close. Is it really? Thing. Yeah. I'm not from up in I that I want to say Fostoria is like another 30 minutes south of oh. Bowling Green. Okay. Yeah. But John is a local guy and mm -hmm. uh, worked for the Herald for uh, many years, the newspaper. And now he and Brad Morris have started a venture a few years ago, much like what we're doing here, only without quite the, the, the video, uh, Sporting Pumpkin and we just kind of visited about uh, Pickaway County sports over the last uh, three decades. I, I was uh, surprised when he brought up that he had worked at the radio stations in yeah, Fostoria. Yeah, I didn't know that. And uh, when WFOB FM, I believe, or maybe they brought another radio station in, uh, WBVI, uh, when they launched that station, I was the voice of mm -hmm. the station. So when you would hear... Uh, WBVI, I think it was 96.7 or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the guy in between all the on all the sweepers in between the songs and things. And I haven't thought about Gus Sierra for a long time. Gus used to be the morning man there for forever. And uh, so, yeah, brought back some memories. Yeah, I bet. I bet. All the way up uh, northwest Ohio. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You also had an interview yesterday afternoon. I did. Uh, the arts in the art in the streets is back. It was originally scheduled for um, back in April, but we had some severe weather coming through, and you just can't have things up on the the <laughs> display and everything uh, for something like this outdoors. Uh, we caught up with Jade Berry, our special guest, who is the inspiration behind art in the streets. And she talks about some of what you'll see. Some of these displays are intense. They bring like walls with them so you can see all of their things on display. Um, last year we had a guy who came out and actually threw pottery. So that was amazing to have like a live potter doing his work. Um, and we have lots of great businesses like Nelly Dog Pottery. They are coming and um, she puts all of her beautiful stuff on display. And it's just so cool that we get to have... Um, a city who allows us to do things like this and really visit all parts of our community at once. So, yeah. yeah. And very well attended last year. Very well attended. I will never forget looking up from the bandstand and seeing a street full of people. Um, you just never know what you're going to get when you bring something new to a city. You just kind of cross your fingers and make sure you t cross the T's and dot the I's and everything's in place. And then when you see the impact that it has, it, it really knocks you off your feet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we just discovered a typo <laughs> in the uh, the graphic. Dan DeGarmo is going to love you. Yeah. <laughs> Doyle D's. You is can, that what you it, can it bench says? him on the uh, the uh, Worthington's uh, <laughs> saw, uh, baseball game. That's yeah. true. <laughs> All right. But uh, this event takes place again June 9th. That's a Friday night. There it is. Doyle D's. <laughs> love you, Dan. I've renamed his uh, business. He's, he's getting extra free advertising there you here. Go. Um, but uh, once again, we, we find ourselves getting ready for this Art in the Streets event, June 9th, 5 until 9 p.m. The event is free, but if you want to be a vendor, you want to uh, put your art on display, there is a charge for that. Gotcha. All righty. Hey, some uh, scholarship money going out. Thanks to Floor BWXT. Continue the tradition of supporting higher education in Southern Ohio with their STEAM scholarship program. Only 12 students from Ross, Pike, Scioto, and Jackson counties are awarded a $2,000 scholarship to use in their pursuit of a degree related to science, technology, engineering, arts, or math. Now, this year's winners from Ross and Pike County, first of all, Ross, that's Allison Lutz of Chillicothe High School. 
Kendall Dye of Paint Valley High School, Jessica Elick of Adena High School, and down in Pike County, this year's winners are Julia Clark of Waverly and Riley Potts of Eastern High School. Congratulations to all of those students, and I'm pretty sure most all of them have their college of choice picked out. And that $2,000 is spent already. (laughs) Books probably (laughs) cost Mm -hmm. that much. For the last 18 years, the Veterans Beneficial Board Volunteers of Columbus has conducted an annual Armed Forces Motorcycle Ride, visiting the vets at the Chillicothe VAMC along the way. Chillicothe VAMC Voluntary Services wanted to thank Steve Miller, himself a Vietnam vet, and all those involved for their donation and continued support to the Chillicothe VA and our wonderful veterans. Chillicothe City Pool will open for the season this Saturday. The pool hours for the year 2023 are noon to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Sundays. Over in Highland County, the Hillsborough Street and Safety Committee will meet May 30th at 6.30 p.m. at 130 North High Street to discuss the proposed one way for Johnson Street. That according to uh, Committee Chair Adam Wilkins. So if you have any feelings about whether you want to see that one way or not, you might attend that public committee meeting to voice your opinion. Memorial Day weekend can be a busy time for cemeteries in the state, and the Department of Commerce encourages visitors to report any issues they see to cemetery management. If issues cannot be resolved, the Ohio Commerce's Division of Real Estate and Professional Licensing is charged with ensuring the proper maintenance and operation of our cemeteries. Millions of drivers will hit the road for the Memorial Day holiday weekend, kicking off the unofficial start to summer. AAA is predicting that 42.3 million Americans will travel more than 50 miles from home during the holiday, a 7% increase over last year. And many of those people will be doing that traveling on the roadways. Highway Patrol will be keeping a close eye on the roads with an extra emphasis on seatbelt violations, impaired or distracted drivers, and speeding. And a note for this driver, keep your eyes on the road, buddy. Well, that little girl over there on the right, she'd be hard to keep your eyes off of. Uh, One more reason to keep your eyes on the road. (laughs) What did our (laughs) reviewer used to say? Easy on the eyes? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Looking down the road a couple of months, Duke Leisure will be returning to the Frankfurt Sunflower Festival again this year. That'll be Saturday, July the 29th at 5.30 p.m. on the main stage. And Duke will be joined by a special guest this year. His son, Hoyt Leisure. I think Hoyt's going into 7th or 8th grade this coming year. Wow. I've watched that young fella grow from just a baby. So that'll (laughs) be a lot of fun watching those two together. Our road report uh, out of Fairfield County, a slope repair project installing a drilled shaft wall in State Route 37 along Rush Creek just west of the Fairfield-Perry County line. Estimated project completion is this July. That's all I got, Danny. That's it? <clears throat> Danny. <laughs> Danny. You were called Danny when you were just a wee boy. If you call me Danny, you were from the first uh, 18 years of my life. Which I was not. After that, it's been Dan. And some people... Uh, now, your son, he gets called Danny a lot he, of he is, And it's the same for me, you know. Uh, no one calls him Dan unless you work with him, were in the military with him, or uh, knew him in school. But if you're family, he's Danny or... Dan Jr. Now that he's older, I, I want to make sure I don't offend him. Is, does he like Danny still or is Dan Jr.? He answers to whatever you what say, Dan. Hey, yeah. bub. <laughs> Just be prepared for his response. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I spared him what my sister wanted to call him. Okay. Now, we can't say what she has <laughs> called him in the past. Yeah, do we want to? But she wanted to say, well, you're a DJ. Why don't you call him DJ? I said, uh, Nah, not going to do that to him. Not going to do that to him. He's it's it's hard enough being stuck with Junior. <laughs> in fact, we were sitting on the back porch uh, last night. And kids were out. We were playing, and uh, Missy and I were sitting there with Amelia watching some of the action. And uh, Amelia says, "Dad is 
your son yeah. pointing to Missy. Mm-hmm. And then she looks at me and she goes, and he's your son, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes. yes. And we have the same name, yeah. you know, and she, uh. she couldn't, she was trying, four years old trying to figure this stuff out. I think I was seven or eight before I realized that my grandmother was my dad's mom <laughs> because dad, we were over there at her house one day and she, dad called her mom. And I said, wait a minute, you're, mo- you're his mom. I don't, I was re- pretty sheltered. Do, do you recall when you first learned your parents' real names? I don't recall that. I mean, they were, they were always mom and dad or yeah. mommy, daddy. And, yeah. and, and then you run into this moment where it, Why'd they call you Bob? <laughs> yeah. well, that's, Bob. My, that's my name, son. And, and for the longest time, when, when my older brother, Jim, when he was in Boy Scouts, he made a nameplate for our front door, <laughs> and it says, home of Robert J. Ramey. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's still on there. I, I think it is. My brother Mike owns the house, so I have to find out from him. But... Um, I remember coming back from school one day and thinking, who is this Robert J. Ramey guy? <laughs> it's me, son. Did mom know somebody else other than dad? <laughs> Are we related to this guy? Uh, the things you learn when you're growing up, yeah. Uh, all right, coming up, we'll look at sports for you in just a moment. We'll also get you caught up to date on this date in history. Cyan Valley Dumpsters. You got stuff to throw away? They've got something to put it in, a dumpster like this. They've got them different sizes. You can rent them for different periods of time. And then when you're done filling them up, they'll haul it away. 740-253-8389. Give them a call. Tell them Dan and Mike sent you. You haven't had vodka soda like this. No one has. Made with the world's smoothest vodka plus real juice. New White Claw Vodka Soda. This is Big Chilla Coffee. Horizon's 100% fiber internet service is coming to your area. Call 740-772-8331 or visit horizonconnects.com forward slash chilla coffee to sign up today. Whenever I first applied for the Archways opportunity, oh, do I have to pay this back? Do I have to do that? Like, is it a loan? And it's not, it's a scholarship. A goal of mine is to graduate college debt-free. If you're a crew member, you get 2,500 a year. And if you're a manager, you get 3,000. And especially if you're going locally to college, like to the branch or something like that, it's really helpful. Don't forget today is open interview day, two until 5 p.m. at your local McDonald's in Circleville. Greenfield, Waverly, and Chillicothe. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Mike Smith, here's sports. Uh, baseball tournament action yesterday got underway in the uh, district. As you see, semifinal tough loss for the oh. Tays Valley Vikings. Now, Grove City was like third in the state. So they battled. And in they, they fact, did. Grove City won in the last bat. And this is on back-to-back games in which they had tight games. Yeah. One game which took two days to play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So Grove City ends the Viking season, but a great season for Taze Valley, all the same in baseball. one nothing the final there. Division three at OU, Eastern Brown beat Fairland. That was considered by some to be somewhat of an upset. Minford over conference rival Oak Hill, 2-1. to one. At the VA Memorial Stadium, Portsmouth the winner over South Point, four to nothing, and Valley two nothing over Meigs. Now moving ahead to today, do we for, have today for, for baseball or softball? Uh, let's, if we can, <clears throat> can we do baseball? Can we do that since we're thinking baseball? Because Brian, Brian Biggins watching right oh, now. Oh, I know. So because he wants to know what are you going to say about yeah. courthouse in Circleville? Well, and that's COL matchup right here. Yes, sir. Well, courthouse <laughs> is the number one seed. But Circleville is now three teams in a row that have had high seeds that they've knocked off, including Unioto in the semis. They play for the district championship at Bob Wren Stadium at OU today at 6 p.m. Should be a biggie. Digging for some of that paint's magic from the Prospect League championships. Yeah. Washington is the defending district champ, but you might remember Circleville several years all the way to the Final Four. Both mm-hmm. teams looking for some of that magic. 
Staying in Division Two, only out of the Central District, the Bulldogs of Bloom Carroll, they've got a big challenge tonight in top seed Jonathan Alder. Back to the Southeast District at VA Memorial Stadium, District Semi. Southeastern against Ironton, followed by Zane Trace and Wheatersburg. I was asked last night, can tickets be purchased at the gate of VA Memorial Stadium? I, I don't know the answer to that. Well, most all of the OHSA tournaments are still, you buy the tickets online. That's what so I was So I would assume that's, that's how you do it. From what I understand, the person that was asking me the question was, this game was not available yet on the OHSAA website. Gotcha. So. And Division Four up in the Central District, Burn Union, the Rockets who upset Newark Catholic the other night, they're taking on Northmore. Now, in softball. Oops, sorry. Huh? Staying on the <laughs> diamond. Now, this is the regional. This is the Sweet 16 for softball. Division Two, Sheridan takes on Steubenville over at Philo High School. That's about an hour and 40-minute drive from Chillicothe. So get there carefully. Check, check your GPS. Yeah, but know where you're going. I think it's the first year that Philo's uh, hosted this, for, for, to my knowledge, ever. Right after that, at 5 o'clock, it's Uniota Lady Shermans taking on Indian Valley. Just remember, if you hit the river, you've gone too far. That's right. Now, uh, Division Three. that's a mistake. It's not at Philo High School. Portsmouth West takes on South Webster at 2 o'clock, followed up by Wheelersburg and Byesville Meadowbrook at 5. And I can't remember. I just got run over by the, the dumb truck. Uh, <laughs> that I, not the dump truck, the dumb truck. I can't remember where that D3 is, but it's not Philo High School. I, finally, a graphic that wasn't my fault. Yeah. And I know it's not at Lancaster where it had been forever, seemingly. So, but not there. Division four regionals at Pickington Central. That's Portsmouth, Notre Dame, and Newark Catholic, followed by Manchester and Strasburg, Franklin. Now, track and field. This is day one for both the Division one and three track meets. Uh, the Division one that is at Pickerington Central. The Division three is at Heath High School. But the last several years, D three has been over at, uh, Fairfield Union, but they moved it to Heath this year d2 day one will be tomorrow also out of the ohsa we told you a few weeks back actually it was on may the third that the um <laughs> you're, you're gonna like this i'm, I'm gonna go back okay uh those games are being played at unioto high school d3 yes d3 okay very good uh yesterday the ohsa came out with the divisional breakdowns for the other fall sports it was on May 3rd that they uh, released the football. We, we presented that story already on uh, littermedia.com. But that link is still within this story for the other fall sports. And you can get on that link and find all of the schools in those respective divisions and whether they're uh, moving up a division or moving down or staying the same. Find it there. Big League Baseball, the Reds, a uh, tough one last night, losing to the Cardinals by a score of 8-5. to five. Matt McClain, first career home run. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that an afternoon game that they're playing today, or is that uh, tonight? Let me look at my trusty calendar. That's a tonight, 640, first pitch for the Reds. Ah, uh, yes, Pods. because today for the Reds Head Kids Club, uh, you had the opportunity to meet with T.J. Friedel uh-huh. today. But it was at 2.30 in the afternoon. Gotcha. So. Tomorrow is the 12.35 game, gotcha. getaway game for the Cardinals. And in the American League, the uh, Guardians, they um, have now split the first two games with the White Sox, losing last night by a score of 4-2. to two. And if you care about NBA action, the Celtics stayed alive with a win last night at Miami. They moved back to Boston for game five. I tuned out for that moment because Mike knows I don't care about the NBA. Well, I usually so. don't, but I, I like Boston. And But they really – I don't know what happened to them. They were like the second seed against Miami, the eighth seed, mm-hmm. and they got drilled basically the first three games. So Anybody can beat anybody at any time. I've been playoffs. told that a few times. Yes, yes. All right, uh, coming up, this date in history, and we're dialing up what year? 1883. I got a bridge to sell you. (laughs) Going back to 1883 with Mike Smith on Litter Media Live. All right, coming up next, right after these words.
For transportation options in Ross County, call Ross County Health District's Mobility Management Team, 740-779-9652. This is Andy Tomlinson. When insuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. This state in history, a bridge to nowhere. Not the case. Not the case. Not unless you think Brooklyn is nowhere. (laughs) You know, they considered Brooklyn at one time the third largest city in America. Wow. Even though it was just a borough, part of New York City. On this date in 1883, after 14 years, the Brooklyn Bridge over the East River opens connecting the great cities of New York and Brooklyn for the first time in history. Thousands of residents of Brooklyn and Manhattan Island turned out to witness the dedication ceremony, which was presided over by President Chester Arthur and New York Governor Grover Cleveland. Hmm, I think he's going to be president one day. Uh, It was designed by the late John Roebling of... Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. The Brooklyn Bridge was, at that time, the largest suspension bridge ever built to that date. Which is why this bridge looks like like the one across the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Yeah. When I was in New York in 2010, I didn't cross the Brooklyn Bridge, but I went across the bridge right next to it. And if you look to your left, it was, there it is. That's the Brooklyn Bridge. Is that the George Washington Bridge? Uh, No, that's up, um, that's on the other side of the island of uh, Manhattan. I, I don't remember because, man, when it happened, it was all going on so fast. We landed at JFK, and so I was absorbing what it was like being. This at, is at, his radio moment yeah, for the day. Uh, right. There you go. Um, back in 2005, so we're four years removed from that fateful day in 2001. And uh, I'm with the boss. We're there for a seminar that Clear Channel was hosting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm trying to remember. I don't think the Radio Advertising Bureau was involved in it. But at any rate, they brought all these people from around the country into New York City. It was my first time and my only time I've ever been to New York. And so we flew into JFK, and I can't get over what it looked like when you're flying over the city. It just looks like concrete is reaching up and Mm -hmm. grabbing towards the plane. Mm -hmm. And so we landed, we get in there, we hop onto a bus. Now, it is like, we got to go, got to go, got to get there, got to go. got to. That's how it was. That was the pace. And I'm like, I'm soaking some of this in. The boss has been, he used to live, <laughs> live there. there. yeah. So it's like, keep up, don't look up. People will know you're a tourist. You'll be offered everything and anything. And I, I just couldn't help it. I was trying my best to soak it all in. And so we got to Grand Central Station eventually. But once you got on that shuttle, I mean, you were just flying down. And, I mean, traffic was going everywhere until it stopped. And then it was a lot of horn honking and everything. Mm -hmm. And you eventually got to where you were going. Well, we got into Grand Central Station, and I'm like, wait a second. I'm at Grand Central Station. (laughs) And I turn and look. The boss is about 30 yards ahead of me. So i got to catch up with him now, pulling my luggage and the whole Mm -hmm. deal. And so it it was (laughs) one of the quickest sightseeing trips I'd ever had in that respect. But uh, he did take us down to Battery Park. Uh, we hopped onto the subway, and, and I'm, I'm just following him. I have no – if if we would have gotten separated You'd by more than – Still there. <laughs> I would be homeless somewhere probably uh, trying to find my way back to Chillicothe. But uh, we, we were there, and uh, we went down to Battery Park. I was the closest I got to the Statue of Liberty, was watching and looking at it across the bay there. But um, it was really cool to make that trip. I wish I could have taken Missy on this mm-hmm. trip because she always wanted to go to New York City. But now she's like, uh-uh, I'll watch it on TV. <laughs> so. Yeah, it wasn't a business uh, heading to do with radio, but I did go to New York uh, in 2010. Like Missy, I always wanted to, to visit mm-hmm. New York City and was blessed to get a go uh, on a mission trip. 
But we had opportunities in the afternoon to do some sightseeing. There's a couple of really funny stories, one that I cannot tell on <laughs> TV because I don't want to offend anyone that happened, but it was a true story that did happen. Send him a private message <laughs> and ask and I'll for tell the, you story. the story. That happened in the, in the underneath Madison Square Garden mm. where Penn Station is now. Uh-huh, gotcha. The former terminal was torn down, but now Penn Station is under Madison Square Garden. This is Garden. where all the eggs are for the Godzilla <laughs> movie, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but the story that I, I can uh, convey to you is that um, on one of our sightseeing trips, we were taken in in a van, but that day we walked everywhere, rode the subway, and we were going to take the train back to Elizabeth, New Jersey, which is right across the river. Well, the person that that was leading our group thought they knew where they were going. When we got off the train, we were lost. And we were in a neighborhood that you would not want to be in when you are in New York City or or just across from New York. And it was, God was with us. Uh, He was protecting us. But, you know, there's broken glass everywhere. These, (laughs) These literally barbed wire fences that you would think that, or outside the prison, these are where they stored vehicles for their businesses so they wouldn't get oh broken into. There were what looked like um, cat or small dog carriers. Mm-hmm. Those were rat cages that they caught rats really? in. Rat traps, actually. Yikes. But anyway, we're walking through this park, and we are lost. And this car slowly is driving up to us. Y'all ain't from around here, are you? And I'm thinking... <laughs> Okay, Lord, here I come. This is it. And the guy rolls the window down, and he said, you guys are standing out like a sore thumb. He said, I'm an undercover, off-duty police officer. Where is it that you're wanting to go? We told him, and he said, told us how to get there, and he said, get there now. <laughs> so the Lord was ahead of us and with us, and um, – uh, that was it. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Whew. <laughs> the only time I've ever been scared in the city was when uh, we went down to San Antonio for Dan Jr.'s graduation from um, the Air Force. And when we went out on the river walk, mm-hmm. we got lost. <laughs> <laughs> we we walked the river walk as far as we thought the river walk went, but apparently it it we, we kept saying, how do we get to the other side? And so we went, and I eventually saw this bridge that went up the hillside. You didn't end up in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like it. But we, we got uh, to where we could cross on this bridge, but suddenly uh, everything was boarded up. Mm. It looked like the part of San Antonio wow. you didn't, they didn't want you mm-hmm. to see. And so I truly feared for our safety. <laughs> I'm praying the whole way, oh, you know, yeah. Lord, get us back. And we finally got back to the river walk on the other side, and we felt a lot better. Isn't it crazy how when you're out alone, mm-hmm. you feel scared, but then you're in this sea of people on the river walk, and it's like, oh, I feel comfortable now. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> Anything could happen there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, of course, we were on foot the night we were in New York, but with my family, we were in Baltimore once, and Chicago once in a, in a rented vehicle, and we got into the wrong end of town by mistake. Mm. And it was like, Lord, help us get through this. Because <laughs> it was like, I mean, even in Baltimore in broad daylight where we were in that one neighborhood, I mm. saw things on the street corner. I thought, uh, are you kidding me? Yeah. It, you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and imagine you're wondering and being on the south side of Chicago if you're going to run a bad, bad Leroy Brown. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, golly. Oh, it's the tales of Dan and Mike. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, the one reason why you need to stick all the way through the program <laughs> just to hear this. Yeah. If you just tune in and tune out, you miss all this stuff. That's right. So uh, make sure that you join us. Uh, or if you want to see what we've done, you can skip ahead and That's take right. a look. It, it's video on demand here on our Facebook page, as well as on our YouTube channel. That's where this program will be a little bit later on this afternoon. Uh, coming up today at 1 o'clock, uh, Tiffany Baldwin will be here from downtown Chillicothe to talk about Brewfest. That's uh, coming the first weekend in June. It's just around the corner. Just right there. 
All right, until then, enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you so much for spending time with us here on Litter Media Live with Dan and Mike. Thanks for watching.